Hi, and welcome to General IELTS Help videos. These materials and this video is taken from gieltshelp.com. So for lots more help for the General IELTS exam and more videos like this, please visit us there and join the full course. All right, so in this video, we are going to be uh, looking at writing task two of the uh, general IELTS and I will be discussing the techniques and strategies that you need to practice at home uh, before you get to the exam and some of these skills and strategies you will need to use uh, during the exam. All right, so again, this is uh, general IELTS writing task two um, <clears throat> strategies for practice. So for this lesson, uh, we are going to be uh, using a sample question that's again coming from um, gieltshelp.com. Uh, um, let's look at the question now and then we will go through what you need to do uh, step by step. So uh, the question is, writing task two, you should spend about 40 minutes on this task. Write about the following topic. In some countries, people's weight has significantly increased while their levels of health have decreased. What do you think may be the causes of this problem and what solutions can you suggest for solving them? Give reasons for your answer and include any relevant examples from your own knowledge or experience. Write at least 250 words. Okay, so when you're sitting in the exam and also when you're practicing at home, after you've read the question, the first step that you need to take is paraphrase the question. And with practice, this will only take you about one or two minutes. So um, <clears throat> first step is uh, paraphrase the question using synonyms. Um, the reason why you want to paraphrase the question is to make sure that you understand uh, the question. Uh, the number one mistake often for students uh, in getting low scores um, uh, that lead to, to getting low scores in the IELTS is that they don't really understand the question uh, and then they write an essay which may be completely off topic or may talk about the right topic but not really the right controlling idea. So it's really important in the IELTS that you, uh, you write exactly about what the question is asking you. So to make sure that you understand the question specifically or exactly, um, it's a great idea to paraphrase it. So um, again, the first reason to paraphrase is to make sure you understand the question. Another reason for paraphrasing the question is to get some really good words that you can use in uh, the essay, so some synonyms for these keywords, so that you're not repeating the same word over and over again. So um, paraphrasing will help you to build a useful vocabulary bank. 
Um, and uh, a third reason why taking the, the two minutes from the 40 to do this paraphrasing is exceptionally useful is after you paraphrase um, the question and while you're doing it, uh, of course, you're going to think more deeply about the question. So your brain will start to warm up and start to gather some uh, information that will help you to write a better and more clear response um, for the question. So um, to help uh, think uh, deeply about the question. So again, the first step here is to paraphrase the question. Um, again, to make sure that you understand it, to give you some useful vocabulary and to help you think deeply um, and use synonyms for this purpose. So uh, let's do that with uh, our example question and then we can move on to the second step. And again, this is something that you should um, definitely practice at home and uh, it's a, again a good idea to uh, take two minutes um, uh, of your time and uh, do this during the test as well. So um, <clears throat> Let's try it now with our sample question. So again, our sample question is asking in some countries Uh, people's weight has significantly um, and uh, make sure that you when you're practicing this at home double space it um, so uh, leave room to write the synonyms above uh, the original sentence so again, has uh, significantly increased uh, while their levels of health have decreased. And then it continues, um, what do you think may be and then the rest of it, uh, the uh, causes of this problem and the uh, solutions to this problem. So again, at home, you should write out the full question. I've run out of space, so I'll stop there. Uh, and then paraphrase it above the original. So um, for the paraphrasing, uh, I suggest using a different color um, because that way you're going to see your work very clearly and when you review your work later on, which you should always do, um, then it will be nice and clear. So, um, in several uh, societies, so countries could be societies or nations, might be even more specific, um, peoples, so um, individuals um, weight um, there's not too many ways to paraphrase that so you might want to uh, keep it so uh, weight however I'm thinking of um, words like um, body fat uh, has significantly uh, means uh, greatly in this case has uh, greatly 
uh, increased, become more. Um, <clears throat> while there, so it's at the same time, their uh, physical condition have decreased, have become poor, okay, have become poor. And then continuing on, uh, what do you believe uh, may be, and then so on. So here we have a uh, paraphrase of the original question. Um, now I'm uh, absolutely sure that I understand this question clearly. Again, this question is not too difficult, but some questions might be a little bit more tricky. So um, I'm sure that I understand this question. I, uh, I'm thinking a little bit more deeply about it. And, um, and also I'm starting to gather some of these uh, useful expressions and words like physical condition that um, I can uh, uh, apply and substitute um, other words in the essay. So uh, now I'm ready um, for my uh, second step of practicing, um, which still focuses on understanding the question. So let's take a look at the next step. All right, so after you've paraphrased the question, the second step um, is always to uh, clearly identify the topic of the question and the controlling idea. Um, so number two, uh, identify the uh, topic and uh, controlling idea. So um, the topic is always going to be um, what or who we're talking about. It's usually just uh, one noun um, or maybe an adjective and a noun, but uh, it should be something very clear um, and simple. And then the controlling idea is everything else. So the controlling idea is what we would like to know about the topic. So what we would like to know about the what or the who. Um, so if we look at our question again, then um, we will notice that in our example, uh, the topic is, uh, there's kind of two in this one. Um, sometimes there's just one, but here we have uh, for the topic, uh, people's uh, weight and uh, health. Now, um, these two are quite strongly connected, people's weight and health, um, but there definitely are uh, topics in this uh, question. So uh, the controlling idea here is um, <clears throat> um, uh, overweight and unhealthy um, the uh, causes and uh, solutions so again for our specific example um, the topic is people's weight and health and the controlling idea is um, that people are overweight, unhealthy, uh, what are the causes, what are the solutions. So that's what we would like to know about um, these 
uh, topics here. Um, the, the trick for this second step of identifying the topic and the controlling idea is keep it simple. So simplify it as much as possible. Sometimes in the IELTS, the topic and the controlling idea are presented in quite a complicated way. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why they, the examiners decide to do this, but to uh, make it easier for you to write a clear response, um, just try to simplify it. So um, keep uh, these uh, simple and use the original question, so not your paraphrase. Um, the reason why you want to use the original question is just in case you made a slight mistake in the paraphrase, you don't want that mistake to continue and then start writing about something uh, different. So go back to the original question, identify the topic, the controlling idea. Okay, uh, you're not going to have too much time to do this uh, in the actual exam on paper. Uh, you, you should do it in your mind, um, but you are not going to have time uh, to write it down. However, when you're practicing task two at home, definitely write it down on paper and go through step by step so that when you are at the exam, then you can be very quick at figuring out what is the topic, what is the controlling idea. All right, once you have the topic and the controlling idea, then you can go to the next step, which is using this information to plan a very effective and coherent uh, response um, to get a nice uh, high score. So let's do that now. Let's go to uh, step three. Okay, so step three of this um, process for task two uh, is to get a clear idea of what you will write about. Again, uh, one of the most important ways to get a, a nice high score is to have a complete idea of what you are going to write uh, rather than uh, writing piece by piece. Writing piece by piece usually leads to incoherent and loosely connected ideas that often go uh, off topic. So uh, you need to have a, a complete or a whole idea of what you will write and for that purpose this is what you need to do. So um, step three um, is planning a response uh, using critical thinking. So planning a strong uh, response uh, using uh, critical Uh, thinking. Uh, what this means is simply ask what, why, how about the topic or topics and the controlling idea. So ask and answer uh, what, why, how about the topics and controlling idea. Okay, so um, to give you an example, um, let's continue with our topic and our controlling idea and ask these three questions uh, for each. So um, <clears throat> uh, the example here in our case, uh, our topic, was uh, people's um, weight and health. So the first question that we need to ask is uh, what is people's weight and health? So um, what is or what are uh, people's weight and 
health? Um, now, this is a good question. So again, uh, simple thoughts, good questions will lead to good scores. Um, <clears throat> and communication between people, remember, is uh, or clear communication between people uh, or among people is based on uh, visible and um, measurable um, definition. So uh, basically allowing the audience, the reader, to see um, what you're trying to explain and also to be able to measure or quantify, uh, know how much or how many uh, is that you're trying to define or explain. So using concrete terms and that's what you should do for this first question. So um, to answer this question, what is people's weight? So people's weight is uh, how many kilograms they push on a scale uh, measured against, of course, their height. So how tall they are uh, measured uh, in relation to their height, which is often in uh, centimeters. And then, of course, their health is their uh, level of ability to move, be active, and their positive feelings. So, um, <clears throat> and health is the person's level of physical activity and comfort. All right, so that's what weight and health is. Um, okay, then uh, when we've answered this question about the topic, uh, we can uh, ask our second question, which is um, why? So um, why uh, are we concerned uh, with um, weight and health? So question two, um, <clears throat> why is weight and uh, health important for uh, people, correct, why are weight and health important for uh, people? Okay, and then the answer to here, um, well, uh, weight and health arguably are important for people because these factors um, are connected to uh, the general uh, level of, um, of life quality and happiness for uh, many individuals. So that's why. So uh, because weight and health are related to an individual's uh, happiness and quality of life. All right, so now uh, that we've answered the why question about these topics, uh, we can ask the how question. So, <clears throat> the third question about the topic is how are uh, health 
and weight related to quality of life. So again, visualizing, trying to see this, imagine that you are in this situation, imagine that you are a person who is overweight and unhealthy, and try to imagine how this might be connected to your quality of life. So um, <clears throat> uh, you will probably realize that um, the amount of uh, uh, pain or discomfort that you feel because of being overweight might increase. Um, or because of being unhealthy and just your ability to function in different parts of society might be um, uh, limited because of being overweight or unhealthy. So, um, and of course, uh, if we keep thinking about it, it's very expensive as well. So, um, <clears throat> uh, being overweight uh, and unhealthy uh, restricts functioning in society uh, costs uh, much uh, money and leads to suffering. Okay, so that's how um, health and weight are related to uh, life satisfaction or, or being happy and having a good quality of life. So now that we've gone through the what, why, how for the topics of health and weight, um, we need to do uh, the same for the controlling idea. So ask what, why, how um, for the problems that are uh, leading uh, towards this and the solutions that might help to uh, fix this uh, kind of a, um, a, a situation in uh, society. So let's have a look at that. To see the rest of this video and for a lot more practice, useful instructions, please visit us at gieltshelp.com and start learning for your success on the General IELTS exam.